Hi, I would. Hi, everyone. I would like to con continue to talk about the racism, and I think it's a very sensitive and a very pressing issue that should be discussed. Um, racism, uh, historically speaking, we know that African Americans, especially in the United States of America, have been enslaved, discriminated, segregated. You know the whole Jim Crow law. Separate but, um, separate but equal, uh, all this, and then after the Civil War, the Reconstruction, uh, all, all that has been, and then, you know, we also have talking about a history where African American person has been counted in terms of voting and going, and for elections, their votes, votes count uh, two-thirds of a person, um, so we the, the whole systematic discrimination is, and it's still there. Uh, the issue that the system, and especially the system that has been created and put in place, is the system that is, in a way, also designed to keep people, especially, and I'm not talking about just black people, but I'm talking about uh, all these different people that are separate, but supposedly equal. Uh, uh, the idea of separate but equal, we know it didn't work. We know things that what happened within 30, 30s and 40s and after the Civil War, you know, uh, African Americans were lynched and, and sent and uh, uh, we had a bathroom, blacks only, whites only. Uh, all that history is not being used to meaningfully reconcile these differences. And then we have, uh, in then we have JFK who comes in and creates all these housing projects for uh, if predominantly African American as a reconciliation. Yet these projects have not done any justice to people that live there. They constantly live in violence. They constantly live in fear. Um, I'm sure all these African American people that live there, they don't want to live in in that kind of fear, in that kind of. And that's another thing that should be addressed. These communities that have large presence of minority. And so when you have, for example, you have all these uh, neighborhoods that are really dangerous, not just for the African Americans, but for a white person, let's say a white person wants to go outside Chicago, or uh, you, you possibly can't, you'll get shot. So these are the issues that need to be addressed. But then I also want to address issues. We know what the racism is. We know there has been the discriminations. We all acknowledge that. Uh, what are the solutions to this problem? And these solutions cannot be, they're not going to happen overnight or changes overnight or things like that. But, but I think the fundamental changes that need to start is education. This is where we can change. We can um change things in education educating people we cannot have white or black people telling their children oh look this person has done this your great grandfather's very been enslaved oh look at that white black person hates you or that white person hates you oh they're different they're this they do the white trash they they are uh, uh these people were negroes or anything like that that kind of language teaching children is not useful and this is the parents. And then when these kids come in education as a teachers, uh, teachers that need to confront this type of talk and, and, and to have a meaningful conversation with parents, with students, with children, so that so you can tackle that psychology of where that psychology comes from. Because everyone is focused on the effects of racism, but we are not looking at the causes. We are not learning from what causes for people to discriminate and to have racial bias. And so if, if we do not look at those issues, if we do not teach people, look, this happened in the past and, and, and we need to study, we need to learn from it, but we have to move past that in order to have certain reconciliation, certain uh, um, approaches that would counter that psychology head on. And, and, I, and I call it psychology because it pertains to a certain behavior, a behavior that 
if you are black you should behave this way if you're white you should uh, uh, behave that way rather than have a universal uh, teaching how can we counter the racism and how can that be meaningfully done so I'd say you we all, in on individual level, we all have to confront our biases because every single one of us has those biases. And if we use them against people that we don't like or we dislike, uh, regardless whether their abilities to do their work or if we are applying for a job or a person is applying for a job and we see he comes from that minority and we say, ah, oh, I don't like them, I don't want to hire them, uh, but you're not looking at their abilities, then you have to confront those biases. Same in any category that we're talking about, if you're going for a job or you're going to school or admissions process or all that. But the fundamentals need to be start is home and bringing it up and teaching children that it's okay to be white, that it's okay to be Indian or African American or Native American or to be uh, that race and not this race. That That is the fundamental well, humans and nobody chooses to be black or white. Nobody chooses to be born in a rich or poor community. If you're born in a rich, you're lucky. If you're not, then you're not so lucky. But here is the issue. Addressing this has to be done. It has to be confronted, not just in terms of police and in terms of, uh, uh, of that. Yes, talking about the police. Police should have training every couple of months, retraining on racism. How to confront racism, how to do, they confront their own basis, uh, uh, biases, they have to confront all that. So it should start in all levels. Because racism, yes, we see drastic things that happen in terms of policing and all that, but racism happens on every, all other levels. It's not just police, or it's not just that. Courts, discrimination, uh, housing, uh, apartments, jobs, school, all this stuff comes in together and to have the meaningful dialogue the, the community leaders from african-american communities and community leaders from different communities have to have that meaningful conversation and come up with a program that would bring people together and and have that kind of conversation create that dialogue that would uh, that people can see where other people are coming from looking at their backgrounds, looking at their upbringing, looking and all that stuff. But I think the fundamental thing that needs to be educated is parents need to be educated and then their children. If we do not educate parents on racism, that racism is going to continue to happen and all that. And I'm talking about, I don't care what race you are. It has to be countered and taught whether you are African American or Caucasian or Asian or whatever race that you might be, it has to be countered on that level. It has to be taught that diversity is part of our culture, that diversity is an accepted norm, and uh, that we have to accept the fact that there are different other people, that we do not, there are no people that are above other people, that we are all human beings at the end of the day. Um, that's all I will say about uh, about racism. So, so for now, but there is more to say about it. All right, thank you.